are in beautiful Alaska. Base camp on the Ruth Gorge. Look at all the beautiful mountains behind me. It's so pretty. What do you think of the view, Brian? That's just phenomenal. Phenomenal. The Ruth Gorge is this massive, beautiful amphitheater in the central Alaska range. And there are just a huge array of big peaks and really awesome objectives within skiing distance from the main amphitheater. And so it really just sets you up to be able to do a whole bunch of different kinds of climbs given various weather and conditions. And it just seemed like the perfect first big mountain range base camp for Brian and I. I once read in an Alpinist article that driving to Alaska is a rite of passage for your first Alaska Ranch climbing trip. So I decided to drive from Montana to Lander, Wyoming, to Myrtle Creek, Oregon, to Anchorage, Alaska, and back at some point. Day three of driving. Gonna get to Anchorage tomorrow. Truck hasn't blown up yet. We'll see the next trip. Alberta. Alberta. Well, I made it to Anchorage. Um, the weather's terrible. Welcome to Alaska. I'm in a Taco Bell parking lot right now in the mobile battle station of my car, doing last minute research, getting ready to pick up Brian from the airport tomorrow morning. So the weather sucks, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully we fly soon. Brian's here. My name's Brian Ringgold. <laughs> I tend to wear a lot of earth tones. We're here in the Fred Meyer parking lot. We have acquired many new groceries. We are cooking some food. Being observed. Got a lot of cheese and bacon. And just being dirtbaggy in the parking lot. Well, it's snowing so hard outside that we brought the plane inside. <laughs> Which further decreases our chances of flying today. Here we are in Don Sheldon's hangar making explosions. There are airplanes. There's stuff everywhere. Today is day two of waiting. Still hanging out here in the hangar. Here we are, still looking at weather. Doesn't look awesome, but we'll see. What do we get?
the access to huge alpine rock and ice and uh, being able to just fly in there and base camp and uh, do kind of whatever we want to do based on the weather conditions we get. Here we are. We freaking made it. Flew in. <laughs> we are rigging our sleds for the first time here. We'll see what happens. An auspicious start. Brian flips his sled in the first 10 yards. <laughs> Brian has flipped his sled once again. This is how we learn. No, it's actually because I sandbagged him and gave him a much heavier sled. Well, we're about where we want to be as far as a base camp goes. So what we're going to do is probe, make sure there's no crevasses exactly underneath us. We only ended up having to wait until Keaton for like two days, which is not that bad for the Alaska range. And right after we flew in, we had just enough time to dig in a good, comfortable base camp. And then we got hammered by another storm and had to wait another two days after that eating bacon and drinking coffee. But after that, a huge high pressure system settled in and it was game on. Well, the weather's a little bit better. We have some days. Damn. Dicky. Cook shelter. Looks like we're still playing the waiting game that we got. This is our kitchen. Our stove board is a literal board because airplanes. This is our butter shelf. This is our coffee nook. The storm finally broke, so we're gonna get our asses in gear and head up there to the moose's tooth. Working our way up the root canal here. Trying to figure out a way above this jumble of ice here. I don't know if you can see anything. Looks like there might be a sneak on the left here. But otherwise, here's some Alpine Oblivion. Brian is tunneling right now. Full on tunneling. He's not pleased about it. Well, here we are beneath the moose's tooth. We were supposed to be climbing today, but skiing uphill four miles and 4,000 feet and two feet of fresh storm snow is harder than we anticipated. So we are sleeping and resting. And we're going to try to climb tomorrow. Oh yeah! What are we doing? Chocolate! Oh. Freaking 
First pitch of ham and eggs here in the morning. Some nice open glue. Looking down. Brian's coming around the corner somewhere over there. And that's what's coming up next. There's Brian. Brian approaching the top of pitch three. Some moderate snare ramps up next. Brian comes up, we're on like pitch 14 or something like that, not sure. It's coming up there. And then we're close to the coal. Well, here we are at the coal. And down there is the Kumar. Over to the West Summit. <laughs> Big Daddy Denali and all the other peaks. The range. Then looking up, we still gotta go up there. Summit of the Moose's Tooth. <laughs> Well, we climbed ham and eggs yesterday. We did, how many repels, Brian? 19, 20? Something like that. It was like 20 something repels. Took a long time, very cold. And now we're totally out of food. We gotta get back down to our base camp, which feels like cozy home at the moment. Brian, what did you think of ham and eggs? It was awesome. Took a little longer than we thought, but it's a blast. Yeah, didn't set any speed records, but... Couldn't have had better, better weather. Could not have had better weather. There's the start right there. You can see it from camp. And probing for crevasses. We are trying it on site. Very big ice fall descent, which is not exactly recommended. There's the roof. Brian, what's cooking? Biscuits. Oh, baby. Biscuits are cooking in the steam tent. Biscuits. Animal fat makes me feel strong. Oof. After climbing ham and eggs and picking our way back down through the root canal, we decided to set our sights on routes that were a little bit closer to our base camp in the main gorge. The first one we tried was called the Elevator Shaft on Mount Johnson. It's an unrepeated jack tackle route from the 1970s. It was maybe unrepeated for good reason. We didn't really make it that far on the route, but we got to do some pretty fun, goofy climbing and managed to get out okay. Super cold, super windy, but super beautiful here at 4 a.m. Sunrise on the roof here. Getting ready to try the elevator shaft. Looking up at the elevator shaft here. Looks like a tricky Bergstrand and then bam! Overhanging snow and ice. And looking down here. That's the approach to that jumble. Main roof. Sick. Is that a shovel you've got there? Riley, he likes to aid climb on snow. You just need to go up there. 
Well, after spending two hours getting over the Berg's Run, tunneling and snow aiding, here we are in the elevator shaft. It's like steep, it's nice. Not quite ice, not quite neve, not quite snow. What the heck is it? Here we are on the first pitch of the escalator. Nice ice smear. Sketchy four piece anchor. There's Brian coming up down there. Here we are in the upper, lower, middle, whatever, snow field. Looking out, looking up to the right is where we're going. Here we are at the top of the snow field. Stuff's falling down. Nasty shrund. Looking back down onto the road. It's warm. It's really warm. And I think we're gonna bail because we almost got taken out by a big wet slide. We're 1,300 feet from the summit. After the elevator shaft, we tried another route on Mount Johnson called the escalator. By then it had been a week of high pressure and the last few days had been pretty high temps and stuff was definitely starting to fall down in the main gorge. We're waiting for weather to fly out, I think. We don't really know what's happening at this point. We don't know how we're gonna get home. Do we climb more? Do we get out of here? Yeah, do we climb more? Do we get out? After we got back to the base camp, it was a long string of forecasted storms. So we got in touch with our pilot and managed to fly out of there before we got socked in for a good. <laughs> 